So in this video, we're going to cover the more technical uh, workflow on how the PBR works from Maya and Substance Painter. Okay, so there are five steps when it comes to implementing the PBR method. So the very first one is preparing the mesh. Now, the recommended workflow is that every object that you create must have two version which is the low res version which they usually use in games and the high res version that contain all the detail like the physical scratch um, and whatever the detail you put in yeah in the object okay now do note that even though you don't have the high res version this workflow will still work but it just may not have the optimal result okay because right now we haven't learned how to create the high res version of the object okay because people usually use a uh, software like zbrush to create that version okay the high res version so they can like sculpt uh, all the detail there now moving on right when it comes to the preparing the mesh make sure that you rename all the parts correctly okay so for example the body part body underscore part underscore low they're referring to uh, this part maybe and this body underscore part high they're referring to the high resolution okay because later along the way we need to bake in substance painter and there's an option in substance painter that let you to bake based on the file naming convention so this body part high will get back to the body part low okay so that's something that we want okay so if you have a wrong name convention or bad name like everything is just p cube one then things may go haywire okay so it is suggested that you start renaming all your object properly okay i usually export the object as fbx right as compared to obj because fbx can contain the material inside okay but obj also still works now again as i mentioned before uh, this is a typical uh, setup when you want to do the ppr method of texturing so if you have your character like this right a low res version and you use zebras to create like the wrinkle, the mole, or pimples, whatever, in a high res version, then it will bake it properly. Okay? But again, as I mentioned before, this PBR method will still work without having the high res version of that object, but it just the result will not be optimal. Okay? Again, this is an example on how I would rename the object. So for all the low of low version low res version of the object i would put underscore low okay and for all the high res version i would put underscore high so these two object you can put in the same maya file or you can separate okay so you have one fbx for the low res and you have another fbx for the high res version okay just make sure everything is set up correctly okay so if you put dial here make sure you also put a dial there okay so they both are referring to the same object okay um in substance okay which i think you already experienced before if you want to be able to hide some of these object right you might need to assign different color okay because substance we look at the shading group okay so in this case if you only assign a lambert to this holocyte right you will not be able to hide okay because if you only la assign lambert one to him right then later when you open this holocyte in substance painter you can only see one material okay Hol uh, lambert one okay then you lose the ability to kind of like hide this little portion or little object or maybe this one and that one okay so a good way to 
assigned material is that you try to separate this. So for example, the body casing is maybe the outer shell, and you have the dial, maybe it's this big guy, and you have the optic, maybe it's that one, and you have the outer casing, maybe um, that one, and you have the rail, whatever, right? So then like you can hide. Okay, so all this can be turned on and off later in Substance Painter. So when you are doing texturing for the inner region, it's much easier because you can actually hide some of these objects. Okay, so if you only, again, if you only like assign one material to the object, then you will lose the ability to kind of like hide portion of the object. Okay, so the more color, the more shading group that you put, the better. Okay, depending on what you need, especially when it comes to complex object, then you might need to use this approach. Okay, but if it's a simple object, then it is still okay. Right. Now, um, the second stage will be baking. So, what the baking does is actually like a process of transferring the information from the high res to the low res. Okay, things like the normal map, things like the world space map, the ID, the amine occlusion, the curvature, the position, they will transfer from the high res to the low res. Okay, so in this process, Substance will actually uh, create that map for you. Okay, so if I go back a couple of steps, okay, so what it does is it will put all the information from the high res to the low res. So if there's any wrinkle, if there is any like uh, scratch, uh, scar, whatever, they'll get transfer. Okay, and they will create all this map for you. Normal, workspace, ID, amine pollution, curvature, position. Okay, but do note that you must have UV. Okay, at this stage, I don't have to tell you that you have to do UV, okay? Because UV is very important, and you must do UV for every object that you're going to put a texture, okay? Otherwise, this method will not work, okay? And this is an example on how the map that have been created using this baking process, okay? You have the ID, AO, whatever, whatever, okay? Now, the next stage will be the texture engineering, okay? So you can create uh, texture in Substance Painter, but you can also use the preset. Okay, so if you go to this website, there is a free preset that you guys can use. Okay, so you can use all this material for your assignment, for your project, or whatever. Okay, but the holocyte exercise that you guys have to do, it will teach you how to create the texture manually from scratch. Okay, but all these can also be used for your assignment as well. Okay. Now that you finish with the texture engineering, the next bit is you're going to export the texture. Okay. Just make sure you set the preset right accordingly. Okay. Because if you choose wrongly, they might generate like a wrong file. Okay, because each engine, each rendering engine, each game engine may require different things. Okay, there, there is like metal roughness at workflow, and there is like specular workflow. Okay, just make sure you choose accordingly. In this case, I'm choosing PBR metal rough. Okay, that's the preset that I'm going to use to export all my PBR texture coming from Substance. Now. If you don't have this PBR metal rough, you can go to the blackboard and download the preset. Okay, so they will generate the proper or the correct file for you when you put it back in Maya. Okay, in here you can actually like change the file format as well. As PNG, there is TIFF, right? And also you can set the resolution. Okay, in this case, most of the time. All right, I'm going to be using like 2K. Okay, here's the standard resolution. And the next one 
Okay, we're going to put everything back in Maya. Okay, so this is something that you have to be uh, remember. The modern material that you're going to be using is the Redshift material. Okay, and don't forget that you need to put the albedo or the base color into the color slot, right? And the roughness into the roughness, right? Reflection roughness. And then the metalness under the metalness slot. Okay? Now, the normal, you're going to be putting under the bump map, which is all the way down at the bottom. Okay? Now, don't forget to change the roughness to raw in the file type. Or I think it's a conversion type. Okay? Because otherwise, it will not work. Okay? So there is a video on how you do it. Okay, so this is something that you have to take note. Okay, and one thing again that you have to uh, know that if you want to if you want to uh, put metalness right, make sure make sure like the Fresnel type is set to metalness. Okay, I think by default it was I O R. So if it's I O R, then you cannot see this metalness slot. Okay, so make sure you change the Fresnel type. The metalness so you can have this metalness attribute in which you can put the file in okay so this is just a guidance on how you do the ppr texturing okay there's another set of video they will guide you step by step on how you put this thing okay and that's it